Many respected professor and my dear students, I welcome you all to another session of Raisa DNP online academic activities. Today we have our ongoing session four on uh, DNP and final examination theory questions uh, session. Uh, I hand over the session to professor and students. Good evening to all of you. I was told that there was some confusion in taking up the question. Both questions and my students are back on the same question. And two questions are now at the end of the week. doesn't matter, we can uh, discuss it. It is an opportunity for me to find out uh, what is your uh, knowledge about uh, nutrition in ICU and uh, artificial intelligence usage in anesthesia. So these two things are repeatedly asked questions. And uh, of course, there are many uh, dry subjects. You have to have a clear concept, both for your uh, future practice in managing ICU patients, as well as A in anesthesia, that is artificial intelligence in anesthesia is going to become a uh, thing in the future. We are all the retired people. We didn't have any chance to use all these uh, recent gadgets. Uh, but the younger generation, I find they're all universe with uh, computers and electronics. The easy for you. If you are able to handle your smartphone well, I think you should be able to do uh, all the applications with the artificial intelligence. Anyway, we will <coughs> we will try to initially assess. What, I, what is your uh, thinking on these two topics? Then I will uh, support or give you some clue as to how to approach this subject and write the answers in your exam. So it doesn't matter because we have not picked up those questions. So we will first go with the questions that have been taken and prepared. So, and Dr. Uh, Jaybardi first present on management of diabetic pressure food. This topic is. Uh, Important not only from theory point of view, there in the clinical section of the theory paper, they may give this scenario and ask you to describe that. Or it is uh, very frequently kept short case question in the practical exam also. So, from both the angles, you should know how to write the answer in a theory paper as well as. Answer the questions when it is uh, given as a short case for you in the practical exam. So, it is a very important topic. Uh, Jay Bardi already has sent a written answer in the, to me, but I thought it is better that every one of you learn this answer uh, for the benefit of theory as well as practical exam. So, with this introduction, let me ask uh, Dr. Jaibar to go ahead with her presentation in the management of uh, diabetic ulcer. Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, ma'am. Diabetic food is a spectrum of pathological entities that affects the food of a diabetic patient as a result of its complications. More, mainly, diabetic food results from peripheral neuropathy, which constitutes about 80 to 90 percent of the diabetic food. And next is the peripheral vascular disease, which constitutes about 30 to 40 percent, and neuroischemic disease. The main surgical options available for uh, surgical food in, um, in diabetic food include wound debridement and SSG. Uh, Shortomy, vascular reconstruction, and it may even go up to amputation. Coming to the pre anesthetic evaluation, a detailed pre op assessment of the patient should be done, including the severity and type of the diabetic state, uh, the antibiotic medications uh, on which the patient is taking, uh, control of the blood sugar, and the treatment regimens used by the patient. Associated complications of diabetes mellitus and symptoms involving end organ damage should also be assessed. Uh, and a detailed airway assessment and uh, other comorbid illness associated with the patient should also be assessed. And complete investigations, including complete blood count, a blood uh, uh, renal function test, HPA1C, serum electrolytes, 
and urine analysis of the patient should also be assessed and uh, cardiac status status should be assessed including ecg chest x ray and uh, echocardiogram and fundus examination should also be done to assess uh, in e diabetic retinopathy and uh, to rule out peripheral vascular disease doppler study should also be done and uh, to diagnose diff joint syndrome pre assign test and palm print test can be done and test for autonomic neuropathy uh, like a bp response to valsalva arresting tachycardia orthostatic hypertension should also be assessed coming to the anesthetic goals the main anesthetic goals is to maintain the glycemic control throughout the procedure to avoid further deterioration of the pre existing uh, end organ damage and achieve the pre op glycemic control with the drugs even during first operative period Coming to the anesthetic options for diabetic foot, the surgery of the diabetic uh, diabetic foot is a minor surgery, but uh, in, uh, in with, uh, with a common concern because of its serious com uh, comorbid conditions. Uh, so, uh, so peri peripheral side uh, of the side, uh, surgical place in the foot and the ankle surgery and the likelihood of the chunk and the pain pathways is involved. So we can use popliteal nerve block is the most suitable for diabetic surgery. foot surgeries so you can give a unilateral popliteal nerve block in the foot involved and the next option available is the spinal anesthesia that is unilateral spinal anesthesia like semi spinal can be given limiting the block to the uh, conf uh, confined uh, extremity to lesser the dermatomal levels and also to reduce the incidence of hypotension Uh, general anesthesia is considered in patients with the presence of uh, cardiovascular or renal disease and prevention of intraoperative hypoglycemia and hypertension and in patients with autonomic neuropathy and uh, production of uh, i mean in the production of the pressure source coming to the advantages of the regional anesthesia regional anesthesia provides an awake patient so that intraop uh, hypoglycemia uh, can be early uh, early recognition can be done of intraoperative hyper uh, hypoglycemia since the patient is awake and risk of aspiration is reduced and it is uh, it also blunt uh, blunt uh, blunt the stress response to the surgical stimulation since the patient is another regional uh, anesthesia and uh, avoidance of endotracheal intubation because uh, we can uh, avoid the risk of aspiration uh, since the diabetic patients have a uh, gastroparesis and the metabolic effects of anesthetic agents are also avoided in regional anesthesia and there is lower incidence of post operative and uh, thrombo thromboembolic events decrease in fluid blood loss with regional anesthesia and also rapid return to diet uh, following regional anesthesia and insulin and ohs can be started uh, early with the regional anesthesia coming to the disadvantages is the risk of nerve injury and the high adrenaline use causes the risk of ischemic injuries and local anesthetic requirement is low because there is increased sensitivity of local anesthetics in diabetic patients and there is a risk of infection abscess in the site of epidural or block site and it is all uh, contraindicated in patients with a peripheral neuropathy so these are the anesthetic options with uh, diabetic foot coming to newer insulins uh, many new and long and sh uh, short acting insulin analogs are developed which are called the designer insulins they are made uh, for to make the treatment flexible safer and simpler and also cause the less incidence of hypoglycemia like exist as monomers and also and are absorbed faster or it is uh, and also absorbed very slowly the faster acting insulin insulin includes uh, uh, insulin aspartate and lispro and slower acting is insulin glargin and detrimer they have, uh, have increased the stability and less uh, less variability and also has selective action the b2630 region and the is a site preferred for the structural alteration of insulin molecule to design uh, newer insulin newer insulin can be divided into ultra short acting rapid acting and also intermediate acting and long acting insulin coming to the ultra short acting and the rapidly acting insulin they have rapid onset and shorter duration of uh, action the peak of onset corresponds closely with the postprandial glucose peak so it can be administered immediately before meals and the duration of action lasts up to 3 to 5 hours uh, it avoids the postprandial hypoglycemia also so the short uh, ultra short acting insulin is insulin dispro it is uh, it is uh, prepared by the inversion of proline at the position of 28 with lysine and at the position 29 
An indication for ultra short acting uh, insulin is it is found effective in pregnancy and in gestational diabetes. Next comes insulin as far. Substitution of proline at 20th position with aspartic atis. It prevents the formation of examine and rapidly dissociates with monomer. Similar effects as insulin resistro. Next comes the insulin glulacin. Insulin glulacin is uh, formulated by substituting asparagine with lysine at B3 and glutamic acid for lysine at B29. So next, uh, coming to the short-acting insulin. The human insulin regular, regular is a short-acting and soluble crystalline zinc insulin prepared by recombinant DNA technology. Its onset of action starts by 30 minutes and duration lasts up to 5 to 8 hours. Coming to the intermediate acting insulin, intermediate acting insulin is NTS, that is neutral protein hexane or insulin isoprene. Next is the long acting insulin. Uh, it is a ideal basal insulin uh, which has longer duration and it provides up to 24 hours uh, with minimum variation. Long acting insulin includes insulin glargine, insulin regimen, insulin degludac. Insulin glargin is the first long acting basal uh, human insulin which is available and it onset of action starts with uh, 1 to 1.5 hours and effect lasts up to 4 to 6 hours. Insulin glargin is, should not be mixed with other insulin because it becomes cloudy and results in the alteration of the pharmacokinetics. It should not be mixed with other insulin. Next uh, of insulin detriment, it onset starts with 1 to 2 hours and the duration lasts up to 5 to 6 hours. It's obtained by uh, uh, by which the reunion at B30 position is removed and the uh, mystic acid is attached to the terminal B29 with lysine. Next is the uh, insulin deglutac. It has longer half length, that is, it lasts at 24, 25 to 40 hours and it can be given with uh, at any time of the day. The main advantage of insulin uh, deglutac is it can be given at any time of the day or, or thrice weekly. And it, it's effective at physiological pH and it, it can be mixed with insulin, other insulin also, unlike insulin glargin. Next comes the newer insulin, is inhaled insulin. Uh, but the main disadvantage with the inhaled insulin is it causes laryngitis and pulmonary fibrosis. The inhaled insulin available is uh, insulin Afriza, up, which is ultra rapid acting insulin, and it is FDA approved and it can be administered via inhaler or a stream both. But it is not recommended for uh, uh, patients like uh, smokers or in patients with DKA because it can cause it can also cause bronchospasm and asthma and COPD patient. The onset of inhaled insulin starts with within 12 to 15 minutes and the duration lasts up to one hour. And coming to the advantages of uh, newer insulin, so. Uh, and is better mimicking of uh, physiological insulin secretion and it has better control of the postprandial glucose level. Hence, there is a lesser risk of hypoglycemia and independent of the dose or the site of injection, there is greater flexib flexibility with the short-acting analogs, uh, short-acting insulin and better compliance with the long-acting insulin and advantage in uh, advantage in with the insulin retrovirus, it causes weight loss in diabetic patients. Thank you, sir. He has uh, answered both parts of the questions to be done. Uh, now, can anyone say any points that have been missed in her answer for the first half of the question, diabetic ulcer foot management? Do you think any, any important points have been missed? Uh, India. Sir, covered the, almost. Hmm? Covered everything. Complication. Huh? Uh, com complication of diabetes. Ah, you didn't mention anything about DK in this answer. And whenever you have an infection in the uh, diabetic patient, your answer without mentioning DK is complete. Because they are more prone for developing decay. When you start writing the answer in the theory or in the exam, practical exam, any diabetic patient, so don't uh, <clears throat> imagine it will only to be a diabetic ulcer food panel. I mean, for any surgical problem, you must divide the 
problems in the patient into two categories one due to the chronicity duration and chronicity and its added complications because of the diabetes number one second complication is attributable to the surgical problem okay for example if a diabetic patient comes for an inguinal hernia the surgical problem is not going to cause any infection during the uh, period of the hernia itself there is a ulcer foot a diabetic ulcer foot is invariably a neglected one because any patient as he rightly said may have some sensory neuropathy and the main reason why it develops is they don't feel the pain initially unless they have the uh, fixed and middle stage of early stages of neurosensory affection in the peripheral nerves they will not feel majority of the patients get injured and then they don't feel the pain and uh, the uh, ulcer gradually increases in size get secondarily infected with the bacterial organism and then they come with a bowel swelling ulcer to this uh, hospital so that is the usual procedure so you must classify the problems into first of all about the diabetic state how long the patient has been suffering from the diabetes when how was it diagnosed what was the treatment he was taking whether he was undergoing all these things we have discussed earlier in our classes how to uh, assess a diabetic patient whether he has been following the uh, medications correctly whether he was uh, assessing the control of diabetic state at home with the point of care testing or whether he goes to the hospital and gives a blood sample periodically visits the doctor to check whether it is under control and what are the target organs that functions especially the cardiovascular system renal retinopathy and most important autonomic neuropathy <coughs> so you must must mention about ANP ban diabetic autonomic neuropathy should be mentioned boldly in your answer in your post theory paper and as well as in your exam uh, if the case is given as a practical question you must elicit history regarding the sequence of diabetic autonomic neuropathy if it is an established autonomic neuropathy by the patient saying that he has a partial hypertension he has a gastroparesis he has a rectal dysfunction in the head and uh, mm. all these things if it is established then why that uh, history and uh, confirmation of the presence of ban is important what anesthesia you would like to avoid if there is an established autonomic neuropathy spinal anesthesia spinal subarachnoid right. single shot spinal you should avoid because the patient may go in for very severe hypotension it may not respond to your conventional vasopressarchy so if there is an established severe diabetic autonomy it is preferable to go for a general anesthesia rather than a single shot spinal anesthesia which is a common technique preferred by most of the anesthetic world over so uh, the that is one important thing the second thing is examination of the ulcer it was uh, of course this is a theory paper but uh, have you heard of wagner's classification of diabetic ulcer the one in this group you have all heard of wagner wagner classification or the uh, american association classification of ulcer but the treatment part of it mm -hmm. management of ulcer depends on the depth and severity of the ulcer so they have classified the ulcer into a very superficial one which is called what we the skin and septic anesthesia too then the second degree going and uh, affecting up to the fascia but not involving the bone then going to deeper structures in up to the bone causing even osteomyelitis okay so depending upon the severity the type of treatment you can't put a simple skin graft if it has gone up to the bone and an osteomyelitic lesion is all the time putting a pus do not accept the graft so you have to first clear all the infection do repeated debrema 
remove any osteoporotic bone, if it is, uh, I mean, uh, osteomyelitic bone, if it is going to be a constant source of infection there. And then think of reconstruction. If the reconstruction is not possible, then finally amputation will be the best answer to save the patient from going in for multi organ for failure or septicemia by the infection ascending into the patient's body and also precipitating a severe DKA because of the infection. Okay, these are the two modes by which a test can happen in a simple ulcer foot of the patient depending upon the depth and the severity of the infection. So these points have to be brought out in your answer. And uh, when you discuss the anesthetic techniques, uh, you have to you will classify them into regional and general anesthesia. And under regional, we rightly mentioned about the nerve blocks, uh, spinal, either hemorrhage spinal or a, a bilateral spinal. And uh, the epidural is preferably avoided because it can, cases have been reported to <coughs> develop epidural abscess because of that, if abscess in the foot can travel through the blood stream and produce an epidural abscess, but uh, subarachnoid block considered to be much more safer. But in cases where you are planning for a prolonged surgery, with a uh, culture being negative and infection well under control with proper antibiotic therapy, you are not wrong in administering a technique called combined spinal epidural. You can mention that also. And with regard to peripheral nerve blocks, it is not only the popliteal nerve, but you can go for chaotic and femoral nerve. If uh, the infection is up to the uh, middle of the leg, then you cannot give popliteal may be very close. So you have to go a little higher up to stop giving a combined chaotic and femoral nerve block, which also can be infected. And if it is a dry type of infection, the so-called dry gangrene type, even intravenous regional anesthesia is also one of the options that you can think of for uh, uh, doing a procedure. There you can apply a tourniquet and then inject the diluted dilocaine, uh, 40 to 60 ml. And uh, uh, till the tourniquet is released, the analgesia will be adequate for the procedure. And it is mainly for I mean, superficial procedures or up to fascia level, it can be successfully carried out. So, these are the points that we have to, and we must mention about uh, the ruling out of DKA before any patient with the uh, infection in the foot coming for uh, surgery. And with regard to the newer and Insulin, which is asked as a top of question, just like the oral anti variant drugs, your insulin are also asked uh, in the assignment as the top of question. The main point you have to write there is there are two types of uh, mainly the duration, based on the duration, there are two types of things uh, uh, that have been added to the argumentarian mathematics and the diabetes. One is the very short acting drugs. Just like your ordinary day atrophy, you have a uh, short acting drug which is take oxygen within 15 to 30 minutes. And uh, the duration lasts only about four to six hours maximum. So, for acute control of hyperglycemic state, I had one patient who was on a peritoneal dialysis coming I mean for renal transplant. And uh, the patient had a Peritoneal uh, dialysis in the morning, and the patient came to the uh, theater. He checked the CBG, it was 540. And uh, so the surgeons and nephrologists they were all seeing how to manage whether to go ahead with the surgery or not. Then at the time, only injection this the LLE had come into the market. So we tried that injection. We gave him the 15 minutes of 15 minutes, and within half an hour, the blood sugar came down to 200. And uh, we were able to take up the case without any fear and continue intraoperative monitoring and complete the surgery. And the patient recovered very well without any fear. 
So that is the nature of these drugs, which can control the diabetes much faster. So because this is not a case of DKA where you are trying to reduce the blood sugar in a gradual manner, not say an integral or whatever. Here, because as ketones are negative, you can rapidly reduce the blood sugar by administering these drugs. So that is the advantage of the newer insulin. Uh, especially the shorter acting varieties and the longer acting varieties are given once a day. So, patient need not take multiple injections like the SRES before breakfast, before lunch, before dinner, and bedtime. So, previously it used to be four injections per day. Whereas, if you take this long acting insulin, which are acting for more than 24 hours, take once a day dosage mostly. And the, the main important thing that all of you should understand is how these uh, newer, the so called analog, analog means they are equal to the normal human insulin produced in the body. So, how these uh, uh, newer insulins are manufactured, the engineering technology is mainly by altering the amino acid sequence. All of you know that uh, basically, CN is made up of two chains. Alpha or A chain and beta chain or B chain. And alpha chain has got uh, 21 amino acid sequence and beta chain has got a 30 amino acid sequence. So, by altering the terminal portion of the beta chain between 26 to 30, whatever amino acid is present in the normal human insulin, by replacing them or switching their positions, they are able to achieve <coughs> what they desire. And the second important point you must know about the basic nature of insulin is insulin will act only if it is a single unit, the so called monomer. A single unit or a single particle of insulin is only will be able to go and uh, sit on the receptor as is present in the cells for them to act. If it is uh, combined with uh, three, two, or six. Molecules of insulin when they are clubbed together, they are called dimers and hexamers. So the hexamer has to be broken down to a monomer. Similarly, a dimer also, that is two insulin molecules combined together, they also have to be broken down to a single unit of insulin, then only they will be active. Okay. So if you want to make it a faster acting drug to mimic the action of normal insulin. The short acting insulins are all monomeric in structure. So they are able to act like your normal insulin, immediately go and attach itself to the insulin receptors and produce their effect. If you want it to be a longer acting drug, it has to be produced in the hexameric form. And then body will have to slowly break it down, bring it to a monomeric form, and then it will be a. So these are the two basic uh, points of the normal insulin nature, which uh, they have utilized to produce this uh, long acting as well as short acting drug. And these uh, newer insulins are all available as a pen, uh, pre-filled pen forms. Older insulins were available in bottles and patients uh, can uh, use the so insulin syringe and then take the correct unit and then he has to look it by himself. Whereas nowadays it comes as a pre-filled or a pre-loaded syringe where there is a facility for you to select the number of units you want to administer, and you can easily, the patient uh, can easily administer it. Should, should the cap back, set the dial to zero, so that uh, no insulin is wasted. But only thing it keeps may need to be kept in a refrigerator four to six degrees. You cannot use them on the food <coughs> temperature for a long time. And the third disadvantage. I mean, second disadvantage, one is it has to be stored properly. Second disadvantage is that uh, they are all quite expensive. Compared to the older insulins, the newer insulins are quite expensive. And that is how the, one is the reason why these have not become very popular because all the people cannot afford it. Okay? So these are all the few points that we have to remember. I'll quickly share a QCP on that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, if you